Hey everybody, I'm Green Havoc, and today on uh, ESHQ, we're going to be talking about some uh, some meta, how it affects us in the o in Overwatch, how it affects us in the Overwatch League, and who are the top teams to watch. All that and more on ESHQ's GG. Well played. Justice reigns from above. No one can hide from my sin. And to, today we're uh, joined by NASCAB and Cyanide, so uh, we're going to have some fun, and we are going to uh, be kicking this off with uh, some meta conversation. And I really want to focus on how it feels to play in the current meta, and how it feels to watch the current meta in the Overwatch League, and how those kind of differ from each other a little bit. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, for me currently, I absolutely love it. The Brawl meta is so much fun. You group up as a team, and it's just chaos raining down from the side, mm -hmm. from behind, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> um, I absolutely love the Brigitte. I love just running in there with the Reinhardt and just, you know, watching his back. I love the Zarya when you get, you're trying to charge up that old, trying to protect your front line as well as protect your back line, but really ultimately charging that ult for your Hanzo or Farah. Um, I absolutely love it. It's so much fun because it's really ult heavy, but also it's so nitty gritty. Um, so, yeah, 100% absolutely am a fan of it. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. NASCAP? Uh, I like, honestly, just seeing Reinhardt back and more in the meta, less Winston. I've always kind of preferred seeing the Reinhardt in general. Mm -hmm. So this this meta has been really fun for me personally. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me, I the thing, I, definitely some changes I would like to make. Um, of but course. I, for the most part, I agree with uh, agree with you, Cyanize. I, I like the fact that there's a, a lot of heroes that are viable. Um, I feel like it's a little hard right now for mid-fight heroes, like Soldier McCree. Uh, McCree at least has like a little bit of a lane because he still has his stun, but I yeah. feel like uh, Soldier's kind of being pushed a little little out. Um, That's fair. I mean, un until they play a Pharah, and yeah. then you got to switch on to maybe a McCree, Widow, or Soldier. You know, fair. Uh, unless your Hanzo is really good. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. True. Um, my one problem is I feel like right now there's a little too much Q to win. Okay. Um, That's fair. In in the game, I just feel like there's too many abilities that are like, you know, well, if we just Brigitte ult. Yeah. You know, we're gonna be we're gonna be mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say. Yeah, it's like a lot of just like alt management and such. True. I mean, a lot of the times I do kind of like that though because you know that Zarya has her ult. You know that Hanzo is going to have his ult every single fight. And so what do you do? Do you run that diva to eat up those ults? Do you like watch out for them? Do you spread out? Do you like try to... It's more of a managing the enemy's ults now too. Oh, fair, fair. Yeah. And and that's why I just think I, I would like to see Soldier in a slightly more comfortable place, just because I don't mind the Q to win when yeah. the mid-fight heroes are allowed to thrive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right now it feels like if you're a mid-fight hero, you don't do enough to win the mid-fight, but then you don't have an ultimate that's good enough to level the playing field in the ult fight. So I just feel like, like in a lot of scenarios, like why would you take soldier when you could have hanzo right. his ultimate True. can't mm -hmm. be stopped higher damage yeah. output less blockable unless you have a diva and you're right up on top of him yeah you yeah know? i i mean you have to kind of outplay it, i right? feel like if i'm a hanzo yeah. and there's a diva right there i just I, you don't <laughs> you bait else, it out or something you bait it right? out yeah. you stormbow sure. and then diva goes okay well i have to defense matrix yeah. and then you just wait till the defense matrix is over because stormbow lasts you know an eternity <laughs> right, and then right. once you've demac the diva with your stormbow <laughs> <laughs> then you <Yeah>. ult <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I mean, that's understandable, yeah, but I still feel like uh, you you can. I, it's a little bit more difficult, but you still really have to concentrate on outplaying their ults and making sure that you're on top of them. Oh, sure. Yeah. Could it be like uh, that ults are maybe up too often? Potentially like the more powerful ones, like Hanzo ult, for I, example. I definitely feel like uh, Hanzo ult is you can use it and the beginning of the fight, the middle of the fight, the end of the fight. Yeah. You know, before yeah. the next fight, during the start of the first fight. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's, it's your new E, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, essentially yeah. I, yeah. I, we Storm were in a, 
In right. fact, the, the three of us were, were in a game <laughs> um, the other day on a King's Row where Hanzo, it felt like he was ulting every 30 seconds. It was pretty yeah. annoying. Although, even then, without the Zarya, it's pretty easy to just sidestep um, unless sure. you're in a lane. So well, I'm not really sad I, about I mean, that. Sure. But you're always going to have it up with the with the Zarya has it. The thing, yeah. for, the thing for me, though, is I feel like if he was a better Hanzo with because he was a good Hanzo obviously yeah. because he always had his ult if he was a better Hanzo with his ult sure I feel like he could have gotten at least a pick yeah we're on King's one Row there's yeah. so many yeah. alleyways I feel like he could have gotten one pick in ult <laughs> and if he just does that he's still picking someone yeah. through a wall it's a free kill so, right yeah, yeah. That, that's understandable it's like a tracer bomb he's but so yeah I basically I, I definitely so. go with what you said NASCAB about uh, I feel like maybe the ults are up too much yeah, yeah. especially the more powerful ones yeah sure so. so it's high speed. Um, it's a little bit more uh, countering as well. So, I mean, it's yeah. it's a pretty fun patch. You know, it I is. like it. Oh, yeah. No, it I, ultimately, like I said, I would still make tweaks, mm -hmm. a couple changes. Of course. But ultimately, I definitely like the fact that, you know, there's a lot of heroes that can be played. Yeah. Maybe not everyone's super, like, super meta. Sure, sure. However, though... People are also slow to adapt, so who knows if this, uh, you know, this three support Zarya Hanzo is actually gonna be the meta comp, right? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I was watching. We were watching uh, the Owl this week, and they weren't absolutely conforming to how I've been seeing the meta play mm -hmm. in comp. And on, so there's a lot of room to expand and kind of try out. Yeah, yeah. and in an Owl. They're using the most broken version of Brigitte. Exactly. Five second stun, <laughs> yeah. 150 armor rally, mm -hmm. uh, 90 degree angle shield bash. Yeah. If we're watching Brigitte's mm -hmm. hit tracers while they're not even looking at tracer. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I honestly, I don't actually know how that ever went uh, live. Sure. Like how people thought that was a good <laughs> right, idea. Right. Oh, man. But it's nuts. Um, speaking of uh, the Overwatch League, I want to talk a little bit about the Overwatch League's meta. So, sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, we did record something a little earlier today, so a teaser for some later content. But um, uh, in summary, how do you feel about uh, the differences between um, what we play versus what we see? Sure. I, I mean, it's kind of interesting because they don't have that Hanzo buff, so they have to kind of work around that. They're they're having yeah. the, the Pharahs, they're having the... the the other side of the coin mm -hmm. instead of Hanzo, you have to replace it with something else. Yeah. Um, I still see a couple of Zarya's um, as well as Hanzo. We're seeing a little bit more Hanzo mm -hmm. play, but it's not yeah. constant. It's so, not staying with the meta. One it, thing I want to ask yeah, you yeah. Uh, about Hanzo is, so we recently obviously got the huge Hanzo buff. Yeah, yeah. Some people didn't think the Hanzo buff was entirely needed, that mm -hmm. maybe a tweak to his kit could have sufficed. It's definitely right. possible. With what we're seeing in the Overwatch League and how much they're using old Hanzo to a very effective and high margin sure. on a, quite a few maps, yeah. just based on the fact that Brigitte can make it so Tracer can't be played at all times. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Hanzo changes were 100% necessary? Yes. Okay. The reason being is because uh, it was, in in essence, a, a similar hero to Zarya. It's an ult, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So you're waiting yeah. for that Hanzo ult. You might get a couple picks, but you're not on the level of Widowmaker. Mm -hmm. um, you're pretty strong mid, and you can, you know, use Scattershot, but I would still take McCree over that old Hanzo. Yep. So there, it's... <laughs> I would still say it wasn't. It, they they ran it because of the ult. Okay, that's the only reason. I, I, th I think it's also a fair argument to make that when you're at that level of play, that the, those players are in in a way they're amalgamations. They're not something you can depend on. So they're going to be able to pull things off, like a you know Hanzo picks that for shouldn't us, happen. Exactly right? for us, yeah. we wouldn't be able to accomplish yeah. because we're not. 70% accuracy yeah. on aim hero 30 minutes a day every day 18 sure. hour overwatch mm -hmm. players <laughs> exactly <laughs> the fact that like they can plan around like they they have way better ults economy mm -hmm. as a team cuz they can plan around okay we only use you the hum yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, exactly so. 100%. and hanzo being an alt you know they can plan around that i will say it is interesting um and uh, this is something I, I, I wish we could have seen more of yeah. for while we had old Hanzo. Not that it matters anymore. <laughs> yeah, true. But with the fact that one of the things that you see the, the Hanzos do every single time Scattershot is up 
is they shoot the shield. They shoot right in front of Reinhardt's mm-hmm, shield, and mm-hmm. they do that, you know, 450-something damage to his shield, just sure. boom. And mm-hmm. you watch Reinhardt go like, I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, yeah. if we could have had Hanzo's doing that the whole time, I might not have disliked the character the whole time. Sure, was I mean, yeah, it's a tank buster, 100%. Yeah. I, it, it's definitely one of those things where, because he wasn't being played very often, we didn't really see that in mm-hmm. action, or the majority of players didn't see that in action. So no one did it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I completely 100% agree. And if I did see that, I would be definitely using that a little bit more instead of the little corner shots that mm-hmm. I like taking. It, what this brings me to mm-hmm. is uh, is uh, our, our next uh, segment, our game kind of, if yeah. you will. A little less of a game. And <laughs> this one is, it is a letter to um, the Overwatch League and kind of Blizzard in general. And, and that is this. Here's something I, over the course of the Overwatch League, I'm already tired with. I'm already tired with watching a a stage play out on a meta that I've been done with for a month. Um, Or in the most recent case, a meta that never existed. A meta that existed maybe, you know, three days. And on top of that was then nerfed within a week. I I don't want to watch irrelevant content because how much we've learned on how to use old Hanzo in four days is is outstanding. The amount of play that people could have been doing this whole time if we would have been able to see this character played this way. But that comes from allowing us to watch the players play on what we play. When they play behind us, we don't get to learn anything and you break us apart as a community. They are the pinnacle of the players. They are the, the top echelon, but you, uh, you, you make it so they play in this game that isn't ours. And when you make it so we can't team play, you make it so we can't play like them. So if we can't learn from them and we can't play like them, what is the point of having a league? When I watch you know, uh, soccer or football, I think to myself, uh, man, it would be awesome to be able to play like that, be able to play with my friends, be able to do this. And what can I do? I can go join rec leagues where what do I do? I'm getting a group of people to play the game the way it's supposed to be played. But I can't do that in Overwatch. And so my big letter to Blizzard and my big letter to the Overwatch League is you need to sort this out. We need the abilities to play like pros Otherwise, Overwatch Open will stay a joke. Contenders will stay something that seems like this forlong dream that no one can achieve except for the top tier of players. And the Overwatch League will continue to be this mythical place where these odd entities get to have fun that has nothing to do with what we get to do. So that, in my opinion, is... uh, Or not my opinion. That is my letter to the League. From Game Havoc. From Green Havoc. (laughs) Love Green Havoc. (laughs) With all the love in the world. All right, I'm sorry. I'm done. (laughs) You guys guys really want to make sure. From Green Havoc, (laughs) that side of the table. To Jeff from... (laughs) P.S. Sinai's loves you. (laughs) But so... I mean, and I think that's fair. I don't think I'm being too harsh in what I'm saying. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think their worries were kind of, I mean, a little bit unfounded uh, as well. Uh, they are the pinnacle players. So if anything, if there is kind of like tweaks that they need mm-hmm. to do, that they need to release, the pro players can deal with that and they can play around it or, or whatnot. Yeah. Because they're the, like you said, they're the pinnacle players of Overwatch. Yeah. yeah. And, and on top of that, we do, like I said, we do have a, a video coming out that covers a little bit of this topic yeah. and uh, certain aspects a mm-hmm. little more in depth. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, we'll have that up on YouTube this coming week. Um, and But yeah, it's just for me, it's like... It's so weird because contenders also, it get, they play on live anyways. Yeah, they, uh, can, can, <laughs> so it's can, like... Why yeah. does Overwatch? It's it's the they're supposed to be like kind of hand in hand at least. And and, and for cont- the one thing I like with contenders is when they do hold something back, it's typically yeah. because it's at a milestone. Yeah, right? yeah. All right, yeah, we've absolutely. been playing this whole this whole last couple of weeks, and now the stage finals are here, and now the meta's changed. No, no, no. We're gonna continue It'd the be stage finals yeah. on, and that I'm okay with. I'm okay with delays. Tournaments operate in delays. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know they they freeze the time period that they're in. Yeah. But this whole, like, starting a stage, 
behind or starting a stage and then a week into the stage our meta is changing this yeah. is something that maybe they need to work more closely with the overwatch team with. yeah so they release like the big patches at the end of stages exactly right? so like our Makes meta changes sense. with their meta i mean sure. is so. that a delayed patch i would be okay with yeah uh stage is only five weeks exactly so mm -hmm. I'm, i would be okay with that that makes sense i like that i really like that letter mm -hmm. so uh, i am glad. especially the love <laughs> yes, 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 oh, love, love from Zionist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And especially all of the it was green hat. He said that. He <laughs> he said said don't that, like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. Um so I want to talk about this. Okay. Going, okay. going over it, okay. into a, a different version of the meta discussion. Oh, okay. I cool, want to cool. talk about the kings of oh, the meta. Okay. All right. I want to talk about if if you had to avoid a team in a dark alley, which team is it? <laughs> um <laughs> Florida Mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for a different reason. Oh, okay. rude. Um, yeah. I feel like, <laughs> I, and I and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think the team that we we all think of when we think scariest team in the Overwatch League, at least of right now, yeah. is the Houston Outlaws. They yeah. huh. looked insanely yeah good. no i i would agree with that yeah i i mean the excelsior they adapt really well yeah the, the excelsior of course always look potent and um i would also say the fusion mm -hmm. i mean so i mean let's yeah. i want to mm -hmm. get this conversation I would, actually uh, back to your point i would yeah. disagree that they don't adapt i feel like this meta just fell in their lap it's like oh this is what we do and now they're just playing to their strengths oh, we, uh, for, for outlaws yeah sorry yeah, you for know outlaws, what yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it definitely does play to their shoes. I, mean, I got, think they I, adapt decently. Yeah, though. I mean, Junkrat and Widow are the key are key players in this meta right now. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, the Reinhardt is uh, incredible. Yeah. Uh, Muma just yeah, mm -hmm. it, so incredible. Yep. And, and it really just fell in their lap. I feel like. Yeah. So. No, I, I I could agree to that. And uh, I would say that the Houston Outlaws adapt well to metas to an extent. Yeah, they have some players that don't that like let's say widow was out of the meta for whatever i feel like linkser would have a hard time or like except for example when jake had to play tracer I, yeah, they, it, they struggled if the yeah. meta is tracer involved <laughs> the outlaws are not good <laughs> yeah, yeah right right which sadly has me meant that they have been yeah. mediocre in every stage but, of the overwatch league so right. far but the cool yeah. thing about it is like they try though and mm -hmm. you did see their skill go through uh a, a, a an evolvement so mm -hmm. yes it's not bad yes but the one thing i didn't like about the outlaws is you never saw them try to play counter meta yeah, yep, mm -hmm. yep. like the, you never saw them go. Maybe do we go Widow Sombra yeah. to try to shut down the Tracer? Well, they kind of did in stage one when they played a lot of Junkrat instead of playing the Tracer. They at least tried for a little bit, but not for very long. But see, my thing is, was that covered up by the fact that Mercy was so powerful that Probably. Junkrat could overpower <laughs> Tracer? I feel like stage one is just an enigma. We yeah, should just forget about true. it. <laughs> you do have a point. Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. Um, so this, I'm in an alley, right? Okay. And I hear Fissure charge me. That right there is my scariest <laughs> moment. You know. Oh, well, see, you know, but you know what? You know what's mm -hmm. happened. You hear Fissure charge you, but then you get sideswiped by Fraggy, who charged <laughs> 30 minutes ago, <laughs> and just got <laughs> right. Yep, yep. That's from true, the that's spawn. True. I mean. I I mean, Fraggy <laughs> hasn't been playing either, though. His replacement, um, um, so Sato. Sato, 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 has really incorporated Fraggy's mentality. I, I mm -hmm. believe today we saw a match where uh, they were in library on. Um, oh, you mean they're they're what thirty or forty and oh, where they just they, yeah. they yeah. didn't yeah. lose anybody. That right. was just insane. team fight, so team kill cool. after yes, team. Kill. Exactly. So that first fight their entire team is like running up still trying to get past the two walls in order to get on the point and he's up there just swinging away <laughs> doing the other team yeah. i'm like okay cool so he's really uh he he's like I, I was looking at their stats and their stats are identical except for deaths mm -hmm. fraggy has like three times more deaths <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so as 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 Sato is, yeah fraggy's like <laughs> he doesn't know, he doesn't he, know when to come back one up yeah. yeah there's no such thing as retreat in that <laughs> yeah, man's yeah. mind exactly yeah. um so okay well here let me uh let me let me do this um <laughs> right now yeah who would you say is the the most dominant looking on in the meta it, 
I know, me, I know it's week one. Yeah, it, it comes down to Outlaws or um, Gladiators, but I think the Outlaws have been playing a, a couple more higher tier teams. Um, so right now, Outlaws. Okay. Yeah. Um, Gladiators right behind them, though. I would actually argue Fusion's looking ridiculous, this, this sure. patch. Carpe like, has been Carpe popping off. Popping off. He, <laughs> he's proved himself on this Widowmaker to mm-hmm. be extremely good mm-hmm. and Widowmaker is so important yeah. always obviously stage three stage two even stage one Widowmaker has been powerful but I feel like this spa- stage with the triple support mm-hmm. taking out those the extra healing really like gives you that r- snowball mm-hmm. effect of just team kill team kill team kill I, and Carpe really has had a, a very nice anti-sniper going for him yeah and even his tracer was kind of untouched uh by the mayhem mm-hmm. um until they switch over to brigitte and then like kind of countered him a tiny bit but even yeah, then true. he was still a force the uh now I, I ultimately i don't think they're in a um in a spot for a true contention but one uh team that i I would like to give a slight honorable mention to is i like the way or i like and don't like the way that shock has been approaching this meta okay they have not embraced brigida play yeah and when we saw them they they beat soul dynasty Mm 3-1 the 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 oddest part about it and i think it was the thing that threw soul dynasty off the most is once they switched to brigitte they continued throwing the tracer half dive comp into it and Sinatra outplayed the um Wikid's um Brigida play yeah. mm-hmm. almost every time and you could tell uh, the dynasty got put into this corner of their Brigida was getting outplayed and because they were investing into this brawl comp mm-hmm. but then the core aspect of it was being outplayed you just watch them go what do we do yeah well, what do, exactly which is mm-hmm. what do we do next they were staggered and they kind of recollect yeah and that makes mm-hmm. sense and so and that right there is something that i i i think holds the outlaws back slightly as far as a team goes is mm-hmm. they i feel like don't try playing counter meta oh yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they definitely just go like this is the meta and we're gonna play it sure and so i feel like that can hold them back and so ultimately as of right now i think just as as far as king of the meta go I'm going to lean towards the outlaws. Yeah. If you want to talk about flexibility, yeah. I am going to lean fusion. If you're talking about flexibility, then I would go gladiators hundred percent. See, I just, I, I mean, I, I, th- I think ultimately it's close uh, for me. Snillo is just slightly more consistent than Asher. And mm-hmm. that's what that slight sliver. For True. Me. They're, close. But still, They're definitely close, but still sure for, in one of his games, he played eight champions on one map. <laughs> or eight heroes in one map so I mean, i'm a, just you know impre- that's impressive no i have some I'm, flexibility yeah. there and, and and the gladiators are an absolute uh menace of a team and if i remember correctly we're gonna be talking about them here in a bit in a <laughs> oh little more we detail. will <laughs> yeah we will the one thing and this is something that actually the gladiators are the gladiators and the outlaws both suffer mm-hmm. from more mm-hmm. than i think other teams and specifically sure for and linkser mm-hmm. is those two players have absolutely gone mental <laughs> in a game where you're like this guy can play anything this guy can play everything <laughs> this guy doesn't need to play anything but Widowmaker right. he's gonna win the game just by himself and then the next game you're like where is he <laughs> where, yeah. we, we're making we jokes aren't... about Bonnie rezzing Linkser every exactly fight, yeah. <laughs> like you know Linkser's dying every fight Bonnie has to every 25 seconds Linkser has to be rezzed right yeah. you know or it's just you're sitting there and you're like I'm sure sure four will hit a shot eventually oh wait he's not playing this map because I switched him out <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a, that's so it. the they, flood of problem the rotation is pretty impressive will be known. well I mean yeah th- but they have <laughs> see gladiators they have a pretty nice uh, DPS that's you know that's team true. right now going so, so. Can, you, can you tell that uh, we've got a little bit of a biased analyst here <laughs> what no, I, <laughs> I, I'm I'm speaking nothing but facts y'all you're gonna win everything so uh, this <laughs> does actually uh, wrap up. So our, our kings of the teams to watch out for as, as far as this conversation is concerned, look out for the outlaws. They, uh, as far as this meta goes, they are the most dominant team. Yeah. If you're looking at the meta plus the ability to flex into some of the other comps that we've been seeing, then it's going to go to the fusion or the gladiators. Both of those two teams, very 
hand in hand, both super potent. And there's really not another team that is playing at their level. I would say the closest is probably the New York Excelsior, just on the fact that they're a team that somehow wins games regardless. <laughs> it's insane yeah. how good they are. Um, Jonak yeah. will be Jonak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But moving into our, our, our next topic, we are going to be taking a in-depth look on the Los Angeles Gladiators, uh, specifically the Gladiators compared to the Gladiators. So from stage one to stage now, how do the Gladiators compare to themselves? And I'm going to send this over to Sinai as he is our uh, Gladiators um, analyst, if you couldn't tell. What? <laughs> oh. no. I don't know, guys. I'm a, I'm a high, uh, high up there with a the Valiant. They're my team. So, you know, Gladiators. That must whatever. hurt you even to joke about. I know. It was <laughs> gross. It was, we should just edit that out. You know, it's okay. No, Maybe. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, you heard that right. We're going to compare Gladiators versus Gladiators. Uh, stage one versus stage four, but with this current you know, player base and meta mm -hmm. in a sense. So mm -hmm. because stage one gladiators would beat stage four with the mercy, right? <laughs> you you know? know what? <laughs> with their tank line in stage one, I don't know if they could even, <laughs> yeah. even with the mercy. I mean, I don't I know remix if they could. It was, it was, was, Okay, okay, yeah, you're right, fine, stun, fine. Stun, Brigitte, stun out of the I mean, mercy. Because you know yeah. what would happen? Mm -hmm. Fissure would somehow find a way to juggle Valking Mercy <laughs> off the map. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, that's understandable. Uh, and you just basically said it right there. There's no way that the stage four gladiators would lose to stage one gladiators. Yep. Just the, with... Uh, Fisher bringing the team together, Surefour popping off like crazy, being able to be supported by their team and having actually a front force to to challenge the enemy. Surefour, um, Asher, uh, Hydration, all have the ability now to really start popping off because mm -hmm. of that front line. Uh, we've seen that their supports are are doing fantastic. I'd say they're they're a little bit above average when it comes to supports. Um, and they've really grown into this team. They're making sure that they, they stay on top of them and, and really heal them, and they, they know their priorities. Before in Stage 1, it didn't look good. It looked messy. Yeah. Um, they were um, just a medium team. They could win. They could lose. You didn't really know. And now if they verse basically Anyone except for maybe New York Excelsior and uh, Boston, maybe during stage may, three. Yeah, exactly. Then you're like, okay, maybe they could win, uh, but most likely they might not win. And mm -hmm. you, you don't yeah, know what the top tier team. Exactly. And with stage one, stage two, you're just like, yeah, you know, you they're gonna lose. You know. Yeah. Well, and I would say from from what I saw, um, and and tell me if I'm right sure. with um, when it comes to gladiators. Stage one. They looked uh, unpolished. Yeah, they it, it almost looked at times like they were like, all right, well, I'm a I'm a Pharah specialist, so I don't need to practice my Pharah. I'll be okay. Yeah, and then you know, fled a dog's hydration <laughs> out of the air. Right, right. You know, and he's like, oh wow, I, I need to practice my yeah. You know. Stage two, they get that 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 group together. Uh, they have struggled with some communication errors. Yeah. Bishu you know? comes in, kind of helps that out. You know, um, XQC gives them a huge <laughs> setback in confidence, but towards the end of the stage, they rallied a little. Yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. In stage three, um, and I believe that's uh, uh, where, where you left off, so I'll, I'll send this back to you in a second. But stage three, I think we really started to see a comfortable Gladiators. I think so, yeah. They really started solidifying as a team. They, I mean, they got into the, the little playoffs there for stage three. Um, they got kicked right out, but still, uh, it was, it still showed their growth, um, which really said a lot. Uh, and, and really... Stage four gladiators, they are looking pretty good, especially with this meta. Um, you know, sure four is going to be on that Widowmaker. Asher, you have the you have the little bit um, of a forward attack if you're not playing. Uh, uh, he's he's new. What's his name? He just added to it. Um. I'm drawing a blank on. <laughs> yeah. The no, they have. The, so they just added him from. Um, Valiant, I think. Right? Oh, Silk Thread. Silk Thread. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So they just added Silk Thread, and that you know, Genji. I mean, they 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 add. They're adding pieces that are are working well with this team, and they're they know that their support and tanks are set. Right now, their DPS is set. They have a nice rotation going. Mm -hmm. So all the pieces are together. So all they have to do is just really improve as a team, even more so. And I think they're going to be at the top tier. So I have a question. Yeah. 
um, the one area that people have said the gladiators can look a little weak on yeah. is they can get a little triggered. Um, hmm. We saw this um, in stage one yeah. when Houston called them out. Jake, before the game, said that the um, the outlaws were going to 4-0 the gladiators. Sure. And the gladiators clearly hmm. were upset by this, but they got 4-0'd. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, we saw it, um, in the stage three finals where, um, Boston called them out as the easy team. Sure. Sure. And they crumbled yeah. to, to Boston. And, um, this happened actually a little earlier in stage three. They barely lost to New York Excelsior. And in one of their next games versus the Florida mayhem, they looked disconjointed. Mm-hmm. They looked off. They looked, I mean, they look, they look, they really struggled in that game. Sure. I mean, I feel like their mental prowess and their mental They're, stability uh, is definitely taking a hit. Like, tilt, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's really it's something that they need to work on. They need to calm down. They need to recollect themselves. But yeah, I mean, I, I understand that piece as well. And I think yeah. a lot of teams, a lot of newer teams, have that issue as well. Uh, I mean, so, fair. I just, yeah. I mean, I wanted to know if you thought that was a oh, I, situational or more like no, it's it's definitely uh, definitely the mentality stability, uh, mental stability. As well as the pressure when put into those finals, like okay. it just compounds. So mm-hmm. yeah, right. they need to work on that. But I think their their close. team structure is pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I like that. So uh, from fledgling to you know place uh, or, or chasing those playoff hopes for that season and looking pretty good to get that uh, that job done. That is the Gladiators. So um, that wraps up this this part of the show. We we're coming in. To our uh, our final bit, we're going to be talking about some uh, who we think are the top teams of the week. Mm-hmm. So our our power rankings, and then we're going to talk about what games you should take some time out of your day or time out of your week to watch for the uh, the next week of the Overwatch League. So, does anyone want to go first, or do you mind if I go ahead and kick? Please this off? take yeah, it. Go, go for it. it. Go for it. When it comes to power rankings this week. You know what? <laughs> I'm I'm it, I'm sorry, New York Excelsior, but you're not number one this week to me. All right, yeah, that's fair. This week, it is the Houston Outlaws yep. in number one. Yeah, <laughs> followed by the New York Excelsior, then the Philadelphia Fusion, the Los Angeles Gladiators, and this is where it gets a little tricky. Mm-hmm. This this fifth spot to me, to me, no one really performed. That we we watched London kind of flop around the map a little yep, bit. Yep. We watched the uprising go from you know fifteen or so undefeated to now three in a row, two in the regular yeah. um, season mm-hmm. and one in uh, stage finals. Dynasty what didn't look that good. I just there wasn't another Man, team. Got crushed. You could <laughs> like shock maybe honestly. The the shock looked good and bad this week. So ultimately, yeah. I am going to uh, to say Valiant is in that fifth spot. That's okay. fair. That's fair. Yeah. Not as like a very confident pick though. Sure. Yeah. And not by a large margin does Valiant to me separate themselves from the rest of the the league. But that is my top five. That's that's completely understandable. Go ahead. Um. I think Fusion. Okay. Fusion's my number one, followed by New York, followed by Outlaws, followed by Gladiators. And then from there, I think, like you, I, it starts to get a little bit messy for me mm. to kind of predict. Um, I kind of want to put Shock there. I feel like Shock performed extremely well, and I feel like they just, if they continue to work on what they're doing, kind of playing this like weird meta, counter meta, yeah. like it seems like they're adapting really well. Okay. So we'll just have to see how they do. I, I mean, think they just need to solidify what they want to do. Yeah. That, that'd be cool to see if they can increase their ability there. Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> it's my time. I think I know what you're going to say. I mean, no, I can't go against the outlaws. The outlaws have just rocketed off, but it's close. I feel like one, two, and three, super close, oh, almost absolutely. even. So I'm going for outlaws. You know what? Not even NYXL. NYXL is third, Ooh, just because, oh. just because it didn't look as clean to me. So That's I'm going, fair, okay. I'm going Gladiators because they had a very impressive week, and then NYXL, and then Fusion, just because that game versus Mayhem was <laughs> oh, just man. hilarious. Oh my it goodness, was. guys! They were so close to that perfect win. <laughs> I know, just one point. Oh my goodness, but no, seriously, 
if anything, few, okay, first four spots are equal to me. I'm not even going to select a fifth spot because no one has earned that fifth spot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going four, and they're all even. I want... I want matchup matchups between these four. Hundred percent. Can you mm-hmm. can you tell audience he doesn't want to say San Francisco Shock or the LA Valiant belong because he's a, <laughs> a very unbiased LA Gladiators yeah, yeah. analyst. <laughs> California's owned by gladiators. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the purple state. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's take a, a quick second to highlight some of the games that are worth watching next week in the Overwatch League. Day one kicks off big. Oh yes, it Kicks does. Kicks off yep. big. Uh, a team that I like to follow, and a team like that you like to follow. <laughs> Two teams that are desperately trying to get the, the those or keep their playoff hopes alive yep, and yep. get into the top six. We've got the Houston Outlaws taking on the L. A Gladiators at the end of day one of next week, and that is going to be a fantastic day. I must say, this actually might be the turning point for one of these teams. Mm-hmm to to fall and to rise yep. this is kind of like mm-hmm. one of those games very important where both of these teams are going for it both need to win this it's going to be one of those to watch oh my goodness oh. i'm so excited and, and on top of that it's going to be a game where the win objective is the same on both teams who wins fissure or muma yeah linkser or sure for hydration or jake oh every single player has their mirror match Every single player needs to perform. That is your game three of day one, and it is going to be extremely excited. Oh, mm-hmm. Come on, shields up! I mean, we talked about good luck like, both teams. The mental <laughs> game here about gladiators, and I feel like Outlaws have a little bit of that too. Where mm-hmm. like if they lose that game, that could be it. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Hundred percent. And these two teams are not the nicest to each other. <laughs> yeah. They definitely don't. They, there's definitely a little bit of a rivalry between these two teams, but our, uh, our next games to watch actually all come from the same day. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Save your Friday. <laughs> <laughs> your Friday is going to be big. Your Friday is the Los Angeles Valiant versus the Boston Uprising, followed by the NYXL versus Seoul Dynasty, and then finally followed by the San Francisco Shock versus the Houston Out laws all of these games are big yeah we've got playoff hopes we've got Mm -hmm. stage every single all six of those teams right now can still make the playoffs yeah Mm yeah that is insanely exciting it's going to basically cut all the possibilities in (laughs) half if whoever wins whoever loses I mean, New York Excelsior versus Soul Dynasty, it's going to be kind of interesting to see. Soul Dynasty, mm-hmm. if they can take maps, that's going to be their goal yep. because they're kind of in the top of the pack. And if they can take maps to stay on top of the pack, then that's I think that's their goal. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and this is a game for the Dynasty. The Dynasty have, they've started off weak. Yeah. They've yep. dropped two games. Mm-hmm. That is not what, we, we, we talked about them being able to coast a little bit. This isn't coasting. Yeah, yeah. They need to get a win. If they drop another game, they're going to be in serious, serious, serious trouble. Yeah. Yep. So this is a game where I know they haven't beat the Excelsior, but mm-hmm. now is the time to go, hey, we're Soul Dynasty, and guys, we can still win this league. Right. Boston Valiant, I think, is probably the most important game of this week, or of this day, just because this shows if Boston has truly fallen. Mm-hmm. And if Valiant actually deserves those wins last week, I mean, did they deserve to win against the uh, the dynasty? I don't know. I mean, this is really going to prove it too. Yeah, and, and on top of that, that so th- this is a game where it's another top flight team. They they yep. have to they have to prove themselves against. I uh, for Boston though, the my biggest question is this: Do they lose against Fuel? It's game one. Ooh. Now it's not a game that I'm saying you should watch, <laughs> but if if the Boston lose to Fuel then all of a sudden you have to start worrying about this does boston fall out of the playoffs can because Bo- they, they would it's have to lo- they would have to lose a lot yeah. to fall out of the playoffs yeah. but if they lose to the fuel that is a storyline that we would have to start yeah. covering 100 oh, so, yeah that's understandable that is uh those are some of the games to watch out for as far as the next week goes um that does it though for this episode we've had we had a lot of fun we've uh broken down a, i mean just a bunch of fun <laughs> metas yeah uh, issues with the league a teams, lot of changes kings, yeah. yeah i mean from the people at the bottom to the people at the top yeah it's an exciting league and ultimately i enjoy um every facet of it but like i said that does do it for this episode guys that's the gg and keep it well played
Dash Gaming is a place for live streams of your favorite games, miniseries, and the best of Dash adventures, along with a unique behind-the-scenes guide to game development. Dash members are not just gamers, they are veteran developers able to teach, guide, and entertain. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really does help the channel grow, and it also lets us know if you are liking our content. Um, if you have a different opinion about who's going to do well and you just want to have the conversation anyway, why don't you go ahead and let me know in the comments down below or, uh, you know, on any of our other social media links down there. And of course, follow us on Twitter, guys. It, uh, you know what? Again, join the conversation. You, you disagree with one of our picks for the week? Let us know. We can converse about it. So hit us up on Twitter, find us on Facebook, watch our videos on YouTube. And until the next video, you guys have a great one and good luck in your games.